um, it is a uh, challenge for me on a morning basis. Um, and not in a way that it would seem like um, just sitting down and doing the work, the physical work of, of, of being on and carving out time and, and just being here as much as it is um, that every morning I seek. I seek something and I seek to be able to learn something, find something new, have some sort of revelation. And um, this morning, obviously, it was no different. Um, and um, what I, I what I'd love to do is to be able to take what I learn and turn it, uh, or take a story, take a, uh, uh, something that is going on in my world, and turn it into a lesson. Not only for myself, but if it's got value and you're here listening, it's for you as well. And um, uh, this morning, like I was saying, is no different. Um, uh, there is a uh, a split second of time that I try to be more of a uh, producer of social media um, uh, than a consumer, but I got to consume a little bit. I got to see what's going on out there. I go back in and check our um, um, uh, our likes or responses to some things. Um, um, I respond to people um, that had said something and. Um, I'm usually right on this. I don't. I don't like to do it uh, on the spur of the moment. I don't like to do it immediately. But I'll go back and and see what's going on. And so this morning I was going back and I'm like I missed like a, um, we got tagged, and anytime our business gets tagged, I'm like I, as as an entrepreneur, I'm always like worst case scenario, like somebody got pissed, somebody did you know, something online and where, you know, so in that great, that's a great mindset. I might have to challenge that later, but um, it, it, it is the nature of a business owner to just be like, ah, it's the worst of the worst. So let's go ahead and try to go manage this and see what, see what happened. Um, um, but in this case, it was just, um, uh, we have this, uh, um, locally, we have this thing called Elko People's Reporting News, which is sometimes healthy and sometimes not. Um, especially as a business owner, if you ever get tagged in that, you, you just like you open up the door for uh, a continuum of people to comment on you or not comment on you or what have you. And so the the question was, um, or, or, or the statement in there was, um, looking for best Cairo, best chiropractor, ready go, and. There's thousands of people in this Elko People's Reporting News because people will report, hey, there's a dog lost or, hey, I had a horrible meal at this restaurant. Uh, and, and so you're going to have a list of these people that have had experiences, that have had experiences throughout the community, and they're going to comment. So they have a forum, which is awesome. I've often uh, um, wanted a forum for business owners like this, like – um, business owners reporting horrible employees <laughs> or business owners re reporting horrible clients or patients. Uh, ah, this is, that's my ego that wants to get involved and, and challenge these, these things. But no, <laughs> I digress. So anyways, it's a forum to, um, uh, for the people, for the public, which I think is cool to be able to, um, uh, voice their opinion, rip apart businesses, um, for businesses to look at it, read it, feel bad about themselves and never actually respond because the more they respond, the worse it gets. Um, but in this case, it wasn't bad. It was just somebody looking for recommendations. And in those recommendations, people are like, hey, I go here. Or I do this. or ah, ah, ah. So but immediately I started reading through this and it was based on like a couple comments on like, oh, this place tried to take all my money. I'm like, really? They, they got into your bank account and, and literally started transferring money. Is that what you're saying? I want to call these things out. No, it was probably some sort of mix up in insurance and they had a deductible and the patient, because like if a chiropractor was doing things that were fraudulent, they could be turned in. I mean, the insurance commission, there's all sorts of regulations on these things. So I, I these comments sometimes are like, ugh, they just trigger me. And in the aspects of like, yeah, this person, you know, did this with uh, the billing or, you know, this person was mean or this person was that. And so there's some negatives, there's some positives, there's some positives that accentuate some negatives like, oh, I went to everyone and I'm at this one and, and this one's the best. It's like, well, OK, that's fine. Um, and I, over the years, I, I used to get tagged in that. And over the years, I'd panic. I'm like, oh, God, I hope it's all good and I hope people like us. And, you know, but I've shed that over the years in the fact that I am unique and I'm not meant for everyone. And I'm really clear on this and I'm clear on this in so many different directions. And this is going to be your take home for today if you choose to open up and receive this. 
is that you're not for everyone either. And I know at superficial, you know, hearing this, it's like, oh, yeah, no, I get that. I get that. No, I'm not going to be like everybody. But no, like, do you embrace it? Because I've learned to go from like, ah, oh, beating up on this and to, you know, to shake it off, work it out, um, you know, or go do, go do a workout just because I'm frustrated. Go have a beer or drink or something like that just to numb it out a little bit. I've been there on all these types of things to a point now in my life that I'm like, I embrace that. I'm like, good. And then I'll look at the, I'll look at the profile of the person that's doing that. I'm like, yeah, you know, based on what you have going on, we're not a good fit. So don't tag me in this. Now, if I were to put that in this Elko People's Reporting News, anybody that's local that's listening to this right now, you, you know what would happen to me. Yeah, I would just be, I mean, it would just like it would be halfway up on the cross. So it's not what I do, but I keep it in my own form that people that want to play with me in social media, um, we keep it there. And that's okay. But here's the, here's the concept that I started to walk out of this with this morning. And I did a post on this this morning. You'll, you'll see it. You'll read it um, and, and uh, comment on it. That's fine. But it is the uniqueness in what I do. Like I, in, in my right mind, if I blew my knee, I'm not looking for a general practitioner. I'm not looking for somebody that can just like, you know, kind of play around. Well, no, I don't do a lot of surgeries on knees, but I could do a surgery on a knee. Like my ACL has gone and I need surgery. Who am I looking for? And this is where medicine has really shined in the aspects that like if I have a blown ACL, I'm looking for the top knee surgeon. Right. Nobody is like, hey, I'm just going to go to any knee surgeon. People are like, yeah, I, I, I'm totally stoked on just seeking out any knee surgeon to can hack and saw up my knee. No, we're actually we're like, OK, my knee's important. My knee is really important and I want an important person to deal with it. And if I can find that important person, I don't really care about the cost because I know if I don't have it done right, it's going to cost me a lot more in the future. It's going to cost me a lot more down the line if I have to have another surgery or if I don't have full mobility or it, it, it just is not all the way fixed, you know, where it just doesn't get back to where it is. Maybe the ACL is not placed perfectly in the spot that it was before. It's too far forward, too far backwards, and then I can't get full extension, and I can't run. I can't do the things I want to do. So there's value in seeking an expert in the field. And so I go back to our post. And it becomes like, who's the cheapest? I mean, these guys are too expensive. Really? Who's too expensive? Because what you should be asking in this element, their person reporting in people's news, you should be asking people, I have these symptoms, who would be the best fit from a chiropractic standpoint? And this was my point. Why would you not want to go and interview? And if there's a chiropractor here locally that's listening to this podcast or reading my post, I hope you get the aspects that you are unique. You're unique in what you do. For some reason, you've had a series of events in your life that you have a mindset <clears throat> and a skill set that you've developed and you go your way. And that's fine. And you are going to attract a unique group of people. You don't do what I do. And I don't do what you do. That's what makes us unique. And this was my my cry about this post, if you will, and not like tears running down my cheek, but my cry to the public is in chiropractic, why would you ever seek out just what's cheapest or who I like the best? And here's here it's going to come from me. I'm not going to be your cheapest. That's not my goal. But I will bring more value than you will get for your money Meaning that you cannot match the value that I bring to the table for what you have going on with any amount of money that you could actually throw down. You just can't do it. And if you do, I'm going to start raising the value. I'll bring more into it. But it's usually not driven that way. I bring value, you bring money. And we work together. And if my value ever 
succumbs to your dollar value, obviously you're going to go somewhere else. And so I bring more value. But you know what I also I bring? I bring collision. And this is the uniqueness of me. And this is the essence of the post. In the aspect of like, don't come play with me if you don't want to find your problem. Don't come play with me if you don't want to fix the root of your problem. And I say this to people. There are some chiropractors that are going to target your symptoms. It's fine. You want a quick relief? I wouldn't pay a whole lot for that either. And in, in fact, there's a, like a series of uh, chiropractic um, uh, facilities that are popping up all over the country called the Joint. I think you're like $29 to get in. No x-rays, quick evaluation, quick history, and then like $19 adjustment. I think you can get it down to like $17 with your punch card. Okay, that's what you're going to get. That's fine if that's what you're seeking. But I am unique in what we do and the fact that we bring one of the most uh, state-of-the-art, the most state-of-the-art analysis of a problem, seeking your problem so you can have a multitude of solutions. And then we're going to collide. I'm going to lead you in a direction and challenge you in a direction that you've never been challenged before. I'm going to challenge everything that you know about health, your beliefs about how your body heals, your beliefs about how you should be doing certain things in your world. I'm going to challenge your body. I'm going to challenge your mindset so that you may become something more than you've never been before. Something more than you have never been before. Because my job is not to keep you at status quo. Okay, we just numbed out the symptoms because that's an old game. So we're going to play at a different level. And this is okay because I am unique in the aspects of what we have to offer in the, in, in um, coming to spine issues and health issues. There is a point to this. It's not a, it's not a promotion of my office. But in understanding my uniqueness and what I am solid at bringing to the table, you're going to understand that you probably need to do the same in your own world. Meaning that in my uniqueness, I start to actually attract a tribe. And I'm okay. I'm okay with not being liked. I'm not in my office to be liked. My bedside manner is good. I think so. We've gotten some feedback on that. People like my bedside manner, but I don't want you coming into my office liking me. I want you to like the care that you're getting. I don't want you to like the challenges that are put forth. I want you to like the fact that I'm willing to collide with your belief system, to knock you in the face and say, do you really think that health is found in a bottle of antibiotics? Do you really think that the pain medications is serving you and getting you to another level that long term is going to help you. I'm going to collide with you. And you don't often like that. And that's okay. But as long as you know what you're getting. You walk away saying, hey, I got challenged there. Do you want a personal trainer that's not willing to push you? That's all right. You missed today. Don't worry about it. Make sure you get some uh, cheeseburgers and fries for lunch. And then maybe we'll get together next time you come in. No, you want somebody that's going to push you. Like, hey, asshole, where were you? You were committed to doing this, and you didn't show up. I'm going to charge you for not showing up, only because you need to feel the pain in your pocketbook, and you need to show up in order for you to get the results that you've set forth. I'm here to collide with you. I'm here to actually let you know that you're messing up. And I tell people this all the time. If you had all the tools and all the techniques and the mindset and the skill set to be able to not have the pain or the problem that you're in, you wouldn't have it. You wouldn't be here. So you and I are going to talk about this. It's okay. So I challenge you today to look at where you're not being unique. Are you a consumer of social media or are you a producer? Because I guarantee if you're consuming social media... You're not unique. You're becoming what everybody else is. Oh, I like that. I'll be that way. Oh, that person's working out. I should go work out. Oh, that person's doing a detox. <gasps> I need to detox. I forgot about the detox. I'm going to go detox. 
Or this person's got, oh, that's a lovely quote about God and how much he loves me. I need to post about God and how much he loves me. Compared to actually living your own life, being unique in the fact of what you seek is unique to you. What you feel in your heart is the direction that you want to go. I, I seek a body that serves me on a daily basis. So I work out. Not because, you know, Jan on social media is working out and she's got a great ass. I don't know who Jan is. Jan, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have not looked at your ass. But it's the concept of doing for you what you believe for you to be true. Free of what everybody else thinks. And you become unique. I love all these other chiropractors because they're unique. I may not agree with what they do. But that doesn't matter because it's not mine. I don't have to live what they live. I don't have to go home at night and face a a wife that's theirs and kids that are theirs and and put my head on a pillow and say, hey, I did the best that I could or not did the best I could because of what they do. They've made their choices on what they bring to the table. And I love that. Because not everybody's going to fit in my office. But have you considered the way you are facing life right now might be a culmination of a bunch of stuff that you've adopted from somebody else. The way you show up in your body, the way you show up with God, the way you show up with your family. Is it uniquely you? And I'm here to tell you that you are unique. You may have to shed layers and layers and layers and layers, but you are unique. And so as you're looking at 2020, and we talked about a detox yesterday. This is a mental detox. Can you shed everything that's not you? And I've talked about this a lot. This is why I shed everything I knew about workouts and did 20,000 push-ups in six months. It got too complicated. And I was doing stuff that I learned when I was in high school. Ah, that wasn't mine. It doesn't serve me. And so I change. I don't do the classic bench press squats. Not that they're not good. Not that there's not time to do it. Well, I could revel with the fact that they're not good. But you guys are getting this concept. So you challenge it. You challenge the mindset of what you know to be true in your body. How you eat and how you thrive. How you move. You challenge the mindset of what you know to be true with God and go experience God. You challenge what you know to be in a relationship. And you design, like you orchestrate your relationship based on what you know to be true for you. And in uniqueness, you will thrive in 2020. In uniqueness, you will thrive in 2020. But you may need a physical detox. You may need a mental detox. And this is 100% a mental detox. Because likely with social media, with the way you were raised, with your workplace, you have thousands of layers of what everybody else wants and expects you to be in this world compared to that uniqueness that's deep down in your heart. The cool thing is you can shed it quick. It just requires you to access your heart. What do you truly want? And in what you want, you will find the uniqueness that's you. And you start to bring down your art, your gift to the world, and you start to serve it up and say, this is me. You got a slice of it for how I show up in the chiropractic world. Uniquely me. What you're going to get and what you're not going to get. And in that uniqueness, you will find a freedom. A freedom in you that you've never probably experienced before. So challenge it all. Maybe even put pen to paper and look at this for this new year. If you haven't done so already... Sit down. What do I truly believe in a workout? What do I enjoy in a workout? Not what everybody else says you should do. But what do I enjoy in my body, in movement, in nutrition, in my relationships with God, my family, my significant other, my kids? What do I believe to be true for how I earn money? What do I believe to be true in all of these different aspects of life? Challenge them. And are they yours? If not, let them go and find what is truly, uniquely you. In love and light, that's all I got for you today. Talk to you.